Hello! Now if you're expecting a running video, don't worry, there'll be one along next week. And in fact, I've already filmed it. But this week is a Project Green video. Now Project Green is a series where I'm trying to reduce my use of fossil fuels. And this week we're talking about EVs, electric cars, and charging. <laughs> So welcome to another Project Green video and this is a short Project Green video to talk about something very specific. If you've seen previous episodes you will know that I'm getting an electric car, an EV, and one of the important things when you get an electric car is of course charging it up because otherwise you're not going to go anywhere are you? That's, that's how they work. So charging, oh, at the time I'm recording this in autumn of 2022, charging electricity prices is all just turned into a bit of a nightmare so if you're out and you're charging at a at a hub somewhere at a charging point then the price that you pay now at the time i'm recording this is higher than it would have been six months a year ago and it's getting there where it might even be costing you as much as it would be to top up with fuel. I don't want to harp on too much about that because I think it's a very much a thing at the moment. And if you're watching this in a year's time in or two years time, it will not be relevant anymore. And I say that because longer term, even in the medium term, electricity prices will stabilize again. The investment in renewables and all the rest of it is going to bring those prices down. And petrol, yeah, it fluctuates, petrol and diesel, the price fluctuates, but the trajectory is always going to be upwards. So I feel it's not really a thing. It's like a non-news story. A, a charging your EV is always going to be longer term, medium to long term is going to be the cheaper option. I feel I'm putting this out there. Maybe I'll be proved wrong, but I doubt it. Now, most people who have an EV will be charging that thing, not just out and about, but more often than not at home, if you're lucky enough to have a driveway and you can park your EV on it. Not everybody can, of course. I'm one of those lucky people that has a driveway. So I've been thinking about charging at home. And if you charge at home, it most definitely is a lot cheaper than buying petrol or diesel by a country mile. And there's reasons for that. One is that you can get on electricity tariffs that will charge you cheaper rates overnight. So if you charge, say, in the early hours of the morning, then you can get the electricity for a really low price. But even if you don't do that and you charge at the home standard tariff, whatever that may be, it's still cheaper than filling a car, an ice car with petrol or diesel. It just is. So I had to think about what charger to get. My goodness, there are a lot of choices of chargers out there. Now here in the UK, there are new regulations that means that chargers have to have some smart capability. And some people have got a little bit worried about this and saying, oh, the government's spying on us. But that's not the case at all. What it is to do with is balancing the load on the grid. So for example, there will be a, a delay, a, a random delay built into some home chargers. Well, not all chargers, so will have to be built into all home chargers. And the way that works is that what they don't want, what the grid doesn't need or doesn't really can't cope with is people setting their cars to charge and then setting a time for it to charge early hours of the morning on these cheap tariffs I was mentioning. And then suddenly everybody starts charging at once and the uh, demand on the grid shoots up. The grids cope well anywhere in the world if demand is kind of builds up gradually. So that's one of these things about the delay. So that, and the delay won't be very long. There'll be delay, I think it's up to 10 minutes, something like that. So you set your car to charge at 1.30 a.m. or something and it might start charging at 1.32 and the next day it might be 1.35 and the next day it might be 1.31 or something. It's not the same every day, it changes. There are issues with this, of course, because um, those windows of charging are quite small and you might want to charge for that full window. So yeah, there is there are sort of some, some things to discuss for, for the industry and for government about this, but you can kind of understand where it is and that's part of the reason why this smart technology is in there. They, they, they need to be able to speak to the grid so that we're kind of all working together. That's what it's all about. It's nothing big brotherish about it. It all kind of makes sense. So, but all chargers are gonna to have to have that. But if you talk about smart, there are other parts of smart charging. And this is something that I wanted to think about. I wanted a home charger that was going to work or talk to my solar panels because I have solar panels on the roof. I don't have a large system. I'm hoping I will expand it at some point in the future, but I wanted to be able to have the ability of charging my car, not just from the grid, but also off the solar panels if the opportunity arose. 
There are quite a few chargers out there now that will do that, that will have that ability, have that ability to charge um, off the grid and off uh, solar or off batteries if you've got batteries at home off your solar panels. And oh, yeah, I wasn't sure which one to get and I thought about it, what should I get? And eventually I decided to go for the My Energy Zappy. It's expensive compared to a lot of the options out there, but it's also very clever and it's able to give you options to charge off the grid, to charge in a kind of balanced way between the grid and your panels, or to be in completely eco mode and only charge off your panels as uh, energy is available. So it might be that it takes a long time to charge, but um, it can manage all of that for you. So it's all very clever. Also, the app does some really wonderful things about looking at your solar panels and telling you how much energy you're generating, how much you're exporting to the grid if you're not using the energy, how much you are using in your home, how much you've used for charging. And this is data that I just haven't had. I've had my solar system for 10 years and I've had very little information about what's actually going on with it. I know how much I'm generating, but I haven't known how much I'm exporting. And this is really crucial information to me as I kind of try and make my home more eco-friendly and also try and make my solar panels work better for me. It's gonna give me data to help me decide whether I can use solar for my hot water, for example, and other things like that. It's just data, data is key. It gives you all the information you need to make those de informed decisions. So that was another reason that I wanted to go for the Zappi because it gives you a lot of information that you can really look at and get quite nerdy about. The other thing that I needed to look at, and everybody who gets a charger needs to think about this thing, and I really don't know, I haven't got my EV at the time that I'm recording this, so I don't know if I've made the right decision or not, and that is whether to get a tethered or an untethered charger. What's the difference? Well, a tethered charger is one that has a cable built into it. An untethered doesn't have a cable, so you use the one that you would have with your car and you just plug it in. Now, the guy who installed my uh, charger said to me, get an untethered, when I was talking to him about it, get an untethered, because you never know that the ports might change. You can uh, get a long or short cable. You're, you're not tied in, literally almost, to the cable that it comes with. However, I want to keep the cable in the car. I don't want to be using it and it gets wet and then I've got to put it in the car. Maybe you can put it in a bag or something if it gets wet. There's all sorts of things like that. Um, I just want to be able to come home and plug the car in. Also, my wife, who, bless her heart, has, I think, probably only put petrol in our car maybe half a dozen times in all the times that we've been sharing a car, which must be a couple of decades now and I basically have to fill it up with petrol, she just, just doesn't do it. So uh, for me, bless her, I love it a bit. But, so but I want it to be simple. I want her to be able to come home, plug the charger in, so I went for tethered. Um, I'm 50-50, uh, there'll be people, put, put your uh, uh, thoughts in the comments below. Do you think you should be tethered or untethered? I've gone tethered, only time will tell whether that is the right poo for me, we'll see. So anyway, I have the charger. Here it is on the wall. It looks lovely and it's there. But unfortunately, I don't yet have an EV to plug into it. So I basically have a quite expensive bit of kit sitting on the wall, not doing very much. Although, as I said earlier, the data that I'm getting off my solar panels is great. So it's worth having it for that. So that is my charging dilemma. That's what I went for. What do you think about chargers and home chargers? Would you have any questions about it? Post them below. Post what you think below. I'd love to read it. And I will be updating more about the charging in particular when I get my EV because I will be talking about charging out and about because I'm inevitably going to have to do that. And that's one thing that will be very interesting. It'll be a moment when I very, very first charge up out on the road. And I will be talking about that when it happens. So make sure that you uh, subscribe if you want more videos about my Project Green, my move to making my life more environmentally friendly. And of course, there's my running videos as well that I put out regularly. Um, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, all that stuff, and I will catch up with you in a future video. Thanks so much for watching. All these things I wanna be, I never know what I'll need. So show me everything you see, I'll let you go, I'll let you be. I'm